Child. Yay, we did it. <laughs> so welcome, Isabella. Thank you for being here. Gosh, we've known each other for five years, maybe? Six years? Uh, yeah, almost five years. It was January, yeah. I think. So yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy, to so happy to see you. <laughs> Yay. So tell us about your journey. Okay. Where so, you are and where you are and go ahead. So I just graduated high school. Um, I'm about to leave to college in a few days. And I we first met when I was in the middle of eighth grade. It was right before COVID, beginning of 2020. And I just felt super, I think that there's like a really unique experience of just being a teenager or just that preteen years when you're in middle school and you feel sort of like this, like sometimes there's like a loss of self a little bit, or you feel super disconnected. And, you know, when you're young, you're trying all these things to return back to like the self you once knew when you were a kid. And there's this like unfamiliarity. And so for me, I was just really compulsive and I would spend a lot of time obsessing over routines. I was, I was really obsessive. And I think that there was, there's a lot of feelings of like, you need to fix yourself, you know, and you need to do that. And the thing that stuck out to me most was the first time we met um, a friend of mine in middle school, she invited me to come with her to a little weekend um, retreat. And there, I really connected with what you were talking about, about how everything you need is kind of right inside of you. And I think that a lot of people, and I was starting to spend so much time searching for something that was already inside of me. And there, there was like this click and I used to spend about two hours getting ready for bed every single night, just trying to make everything perfect. And I was just so obsessive. And after that weekend, when I realized that those things weren't necessary, there was like this instant shift and it was like a before and after. And that was kind of the start of when I, you know, started to focus a lot more on like love and like putting love out into the world and into myself. And what's really special is that where that retreat happened, um, it was, it's like on my way to school every day. And so as a senior, I would drive myself to school every day and I would pass by that building and like every day it like served as a reminder of like, I would, if I was having a stressful morning, I would drive past this building and it was like right next to my school. And I was like, I take a deep breath. And I was like, you're so, I'm, I'm like capable of overcoming everything and no obstacle is too big. And um, so that was just really special to me. And I have this really vivid memory of the last thing we did on that first weekend was we put down something on a paper that had been, you know, serving as like an obstacle in our lives. And we just like, bur we burned the paper. And that was like the most beautiful moment ever. Like, I felt like my life was like, just totally transformed. And what's crazy is that like, there was no actual like changes in my life. Like, I mean, it was just two short days, but there was just a complete like mindset shift. And no, you know, like not everything is instantaneous either. You know what I mean? Like I have to make like conscious choices every day. And like the past four years of my life, I've been like every day, I feel like a change within myself. You know what I mean? And I have to work hard all the time. But that was the start of like understanding what the mind and like what we are like capable of as people. You know what I mean? And so that was just was really special to me. And I'm so thankful for that experience. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, I love what you said. Well, I love everything that you said. It's so <laughs> beautiful. And I'm so grateful that it was so impactful. Um, but you were you were present, you were there and you took it on and you saw the logic behind what we shared. You know, we're not just saying, hey, here's a good idea. Try it. We're actually pointing you towards, you know, your natural abilities, what we're all capable of. So I love what you saw and how, you know, you've said that you have to work on it because you have to consciously remember. But when you consciously remember it's natural. The experience of it is natural because it's who we are. I think we have to consciously remember because the outside world is always trying to take us back to focus on the outside world. So we have to make the effort to look, look within, you know, yeah. Yeah. I love that. And the other thing I love is, is symbolically when, you know, you wrote down like, what's something that I want to get rid of. Right. And then we burned it. I remember like we burned the paper, we used the flash paper. So <laughs> it was safe. Um, <laughs> But that's how powerful our mind is, is that if we symbolically say in our mind, 
I'm no longer available for that. We no longer have that experience. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's incredible. That like takes, like, even though that change is completely like, you know, in my head, a lot of times like that symbolic, tangible action can just like mean so much because it really like shows our brain, like it goes from, I want this to happen to like, I can do this. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think that just the small things or that can be you know, the burning of the paper. Or if you're just like talking to yourself in the mirror every day, just small things that are like real things that you can do make like the biggest difference, I think. So it's really yeah. Like yeah, ab absolutely. And and you don't even have to like burn a piece, but you can just write something down and then tear up the piece of paper, you know, and just, yeah. you, know, you can get rid of it that way. You don't have to be so dramatic, but <laughs> <Burn> it. <laughs> it's fun to be dramatic, but that's how powerful we are is that when we decide I'm no longer available for this, we become no longer available. So we get to choose that. Yes. And yeah. our decisions are so powerful. Like, just by we have so much like sorry I'm getting a phone call. we have so much you know freedom and liberty within ourselves to do those things and I think that it's really easy to forget that when we live in a world where like a lot of times it feels like we like restrict ourselves a little bit and we want to look outwards to do all these change when really like it's all in ourselves and in our hearts and so I remember there was this diamond you drew and there was all this stuff around the diamond. And, and I, I thought that was like so funny, but it was also so meaningful. And I would just always think like, we have a little light within us that we just need to tap into sometimes and we forget and it's easy to, but yeah. when you make the decision not to, it becomes so apparent. Yeah. So I love, because just like you said, that was four years ago, right? I love how impactful that was that you remember the diamond is that's who we are. It's our natural essence. And then the stuff that we drew around it, we call it poop because everybody thinks it's <laughs> funny, right? But right, you still think it's funny. Adults think it's funny too. Um, but that's all the stories that we carry around and they're just not true. And when we, when we put it into a metaphor that's like easy to understand and symbolic and we make light of it, we see, oh, I don't have to take, if this isn't serving me, if this mess is not pointing me towards my greatest good, then I don't have to pay attention to it. You know, I don't have to give it meaning because we are the meaning makers. So I love how that symbol was so impactful. And you remember, because it's easy to forget that we're perfectly perfect. It's easy to forget that we're perfectly who we are, because the world is always telling us, no, you need this to be perfect. You need that to be perfect. But when we get to see, no, I'm already okay, that's so magical because you get to carry that with you forever. It's so true. It's it kind of reminds me. So I actually had a conversation with my friend the other day, and she's like one of my best friends. We were just talking about you know things that we've like gone through, and we both agreed probably the hardest part of anything is like the people and just like the world. Nobody specifically, just you know, surroundings making it feel like there's something wrong with us when we're all just like we're all just human, and there's nothing you know, we face struggles every day. That's just part of being human. But I think it's super hard, especially when you're young to feel there's like an isolation of feeling like you need to be fixed. Well, if there's something wrong with you, but we have all the tools we need to do that. And there's no, you know, there's this like kind of like, it makes a big obstacle. You feel like you need to be fixed when in reality, it's just you like, it's all within you. And you have to just make that decision to see it. And so that was like, I always think of like, what we talked on, what I've learned from you. And I always, it like is in my everyday life. And it's so, it's so interesting to see it, you know, in front of me like that. So. Yeah. To see how it's impacted you. So yeah, it's made such, and I'm so grateful. This is just, um, it's so beautiful for me to hear, you know, what our time together has just, you know, opened up within you because, you know, I remember you were switching schools or were like a lot of different things going on. And then you got really solid in this. And then from getting really solid in this, you had your, the years after that at school, you went back to the school that you loved, your friendships blossomed, like everything really shifted for you. Yes. Amazing. And it took that time though of like needing to really like connect with myself and I actually wrote all my college essays about that, about um, this year in my life. It wasn't necessarily about like, oh, you know, I had such a hard time, but it was more about, I think it's so necessary sometimes to have that time where you just, you know, 
I was doing so much like journaling and I was just spending a lot of time alone and it really helped everything else in my life just kind of blossom into a new way. And it was just like, it was such a special experience and I really am glad that I got to have that. And it's like something that, you know, maybe I was once a little bit ashamed of. I feel like now I can tell a story with like a lot of pride, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that to me is really special. And I don't know, it just makes me really happy. So No, it was brilliant. It was like, I mean, and kudos to your family because like you knew what you needed, you know, your parents knew what you needed. You just needed to get yourself out of that. There was like, too much stimulation almost, you know, yeah. and, and you just needed to bring yourself out of that so that you could be in a space to get to know yourself better. And how, I mean, when you think about it, like how absolutely magnificent is that, that at 13, you, your intuition, like you knew that's the thing. Like there's one thing that that's, I feel is so incredibly important. It's to know that we know, no matter how old you are, we know, we know what's best for us. And you were able to tap into that. See, the problem is I, I think we don't learn to tap into that. So we're always like second guessing ourselves, but we're thinking there must be something wrong with me because this isn't working for me. And look at all the people it's working for. Why isn't it working for me? But you knew intuitively and your parents knew, which was so brilliant. No, you just needed to step away so that you could do some reflecting. And yes. how magnificent is that? so it's so amazing and i'm so grateful for that and my parents like you said they're just like the best support system i could ask for and i was just surrounded by a lot of great people so yeah yeah that's really beautiful well is there anything else that if you you know could look back on your 13 year old self you know because maybe there'll be some kids that are listening that were around 13 that you would like to share that you think would be impactful yeah. so i think that um maybe like what Story. it kind of sounds like oh I was like I was in this di I was I'm just completely different but a lot I realized one day I was like you know I'm still like I'm still her you know what I mean and like I'm only I'm only 18 like there's it hasn't been that long and like I still have so much in front of me and I think that by understanding that I'm still like that girl is still me and I'm still her and there's just like change that comes with growing up I think it's really special because in that moment it felt like oh my gosh this is my entire world I like I, I was obsessed with that moment that I forgot to just kind of like slow things down and realize that I have so much time and that people say they're like, oh, it's going to get, things are going to get better. But when you're in that moment, it's, it's like, you don't believe it, but mm -hmm. it, it does. And I think that there's never like a, um, there's not like an old me and a new me, it's just me and I'm always getting better. And I think that if I had known that when I was younger, that like there wasn't going to be like this sort of like click, like this immediate fix in my life where everything was going to be perfect. And I just knew that like in that moment, like I was better than I was the day before that I would have felt so much more like empowered to just, you know, keep improving myself, but I felt kind of stuck. And so I would just say to give yourself some grace in the past and, you know, don't let your past like define what you can do in the future. So, yeah. That is so beautiful. You're incredible. You always have been. I mean, do you remember our conversations? <laughs> we would have like the best conversations ever. I know. I know. It would always like, make my day. And like, I would just feel so much happier after like a long day of school. We just talk. I was so happy. <laughs> so good. So good. Thank you. You are such an inspiration. And I'm so excited for you to go off to college and share this love, this inner joy, you know, just exude your deliciousness all over Penn State. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. I'm super excited. Yeah, you should be. Well, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you so much. This was just magical. And I appreciate you so much, Isabella. Thank, thank you. you so much. I have so much love for you. And I'm so thankful. So thank you. <laughs>